let's get started on today. Uh, so the most important thing is that the challenge announcement is up, uh, the challenge description is up, the brief. Uh, there was uh, originally a, uh, so let me just get it, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, there was originally um, an inspirational, um, uh, what's it called, a resource pack before. Um, so it was a lot of this really, really nice stuff that I wanted you guys to work from uh, that I haven't uploaded yet um, that I would love for you guys to kind of, you know, reference. But I wanted you guys to kind of get your own references. I can't just give you the staging. I wanted you guys to be able to figure this out on your own and the critique comes after. Uh, but uh, it'd be really cool if you guys just, you know, researched a little bit. I, I can't give you the research for, for, you know, challenges like this. I gave you the research for the character design. That's easy. But when it comes to environment design like this, I'd rather you guys try and explore some really, really cool scenes. See how you feel about them. Um, imitate them shamelessly, cinematically, framing, gesture. Just don't copy the references of the, of the you know, don't copy them or like creatively. Don't borrow too much from them. Don't plagiarize. Uh, but uh, the due date hasn't been assigned. The due date has not been announced. Uh, but look at it like this. You have a good old month to do it. Maybe the first day back after my two-week vacation between the 23rd and the, and the 4th. Uh, the 8th will be my first day back. That might be the due date. Um, which is what I did last year, actually. So last year after my vacation, I believe I did have a, um, a challenge due date uh, uh, for uh, one of our designs. I'm not sure if that's true. I'm not sure if, if I'm getting things mixed up, but I will, uh, I will try to make the 8th the due date. It's already been out. Please start drafting. I want to see some thumbnails. I want to see some mood boards. Uh, the ba basic protocol is still there. You're not going to be excused if you only post a piece and there's no hard, you know, work behind it. There's no preparation or planning visible, and uh, and you know, there, you can't. You're not showing your work. So I really need to see that. Um, and then I have a couple of honorable mentions for uh, 14 Day Challenger. So this is a. This is um, what are they? What's their name? Eve. I see list. Um, so I see list. I'm not sure what your name is, uh, but um, let's take a look at your day one. They're on day 11, I think, or, or yeah, I think day 11. This is their day one. So have a good look at it. Very, very proud of this. I like seeing this kind of work. Um, so promising. Okay, so excuse me. And this is their day 14. Um, day 11, so sorry, they're not done yet. Um, so this is this is looking good. This is what I like to see, and I congratulate you for getting this far in your 14-day challenge. I love seeing progress like this. This is a face that you now know how to draw. Your character designs and your, your portraits are that much more powerful. If anyone hasn't gone into the real hard work and grit and elbow grease that is developing your, your portrait skills, uh, please get into that. Am I saying that right? Elbow grease? Am I saying this completely wrong? I'm kind of ESL with these sayings. I always get them wrong. <laughs> um, but uh, but if you haven't done this, please get on it as soon as possible. Uh, the, the, the community is wonderful for that. There are so many people on all levels of, of skill available in the community. It's not that you have to get a certain skill level to get into doing this challenge. Um, so it, it's one of the most, it's the most pop, uh, popular challenge. It's a challenge that kind of defined my channel. Um, so uh, please get on that as soon as possible if you haven't started yet. This is another 14-day challenger, another honorable mention. Um, so this is their day three. This is their day one. I don't know if they've repainted some stuff. It kind of looks a little suspicious to me, uh, but I feel like they did so much progress as you go higher. It's beautiful. It's like a, a little, um, uh, what's it called, time capsule of their progress. So that's day one, day two, uh, day three, day two B. Um, and then some laps in work, day three, B, day four, day five. The face really starts to form and mold. Don't paint over your 14-day challenge. Create a new painting. You're also teaching yourself to work faster in your 14-day challenge, okay? Day six, day seven, day eight, day nine, day 10, day 11, day 12. Look at that. It's a person. It's a friggin' person. It's a human being. Um, I think they did eventually start pa re like painting from scratch. I'm not sure. Maybe they edited their piece a lot. Uh, but it just looks so wonderful. The eyebrow texture, the eyes, 
is this the same artist? Like, is it really the same artist? It's just so well done. I can't, I just don't even, I can't even right now. I said I can't even. I don't, I don't know what happened. Who are you? Who are you? You're not Jim B. You're somebody else. You're an imposter. This is so, so good. Um, so let's read over what he did. Different approach this time. I have kept the painting very simple with no excessive editing, repositioning, or smoothing. Only big soft brushes and zoom in and out. <clears throat> I also made a point of not applying any symmetry with this face. Not sure I love my result, but it's too early to tell. Um, so meaning they didn't flip it. Um, flip the canvas three or four times while painting and it was uh, mostly for the eyes and to position the water glows. I can see things I should edit like nostrils, head shape, neck shape, etc. But maybe that would ruin the whole point of keeping the asymmetries. Feedback is loved, wanted, and needed. Uh, this is this is the ideal. This is this is what I like to see. Uh, this is so well done, so beautiful. You started this um, challenge. Let me see when you started it. You started it nine weeks ago. Again, it doesn't. It's not necessary that you uh, learn how to do everything in fourteen days in a row. But at least they kept it going. They they they, they continued they pushed forth. And uh, whatever, wherever you used to be nine weeks ago is a completely different person now. Um, I'd be honored if you guys allowed me to put this up on the showcase and the website. Um, but uh, this is just so, so well done. I, 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 love, I love seeing this kind of progress. It's really, it's really what makes this all worth it. I'm very, very proud of you too. Keep, keep it going. Those who, ha who are in the 14-day challenge right now, who are into day two and all of that, uh, please keep pushing. Don't stop pushing. Um, you will see improvement. I promise you something will click an epiphany will happen and it will all just come together. Um, so to join the 14 day challenge, uh, I want you to go to the direct.com, click on the Google plus icon. It'll take you here. Uh, read this, follow the rules. Um, and uh, make sure you're posting to 14 day challenge, um, and not to another category. And then, uh, for this, this is fan art, but this kind of fan art is sort of allowed because in the rules, fan art is allowed if you have a realistic version or your own interpretation of the character. You cannot reproduce the anime original style that Link was painted in either in Breath of the Wild or original, uh, any kind of sketch that you've seen. So no, no anime is allowed, but you are allowed to have fan art if it is uh, attempted realistically, if it is attempted as a realistic um Know, image with volume and light environment and form. Um, so this is a lot. I'll actually be looking at this today. And Patreon is also available for those who want to support. Um, so that's that's there as well. Okay, so let's get started on today. Yes, I have Adobe Photoshop Shishi, and it is the fucking worst. I fucking hate it, but I, I why fix something that's not broken? Uh, Grandma is the brat needs to get out of the dark. <clears throat> and into the into the modern age all right god it's so hideous all right i'm gonna get started with this one because this one is the most challenging one i believe and it is very very and i'm kind of rolling up my sleeves over here um i hope everyone can hear me see me sorry if there is a hum in the background that's my heater <clears throat> okie dokie so what you've got going on over here is you have this canal, this little water, this underground, it's like a sewage place. You have this little canal-y place right here. And what that's doing is it's completely split the painting in half. Not only do you, you know, already have a system in place that has split the, 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 the units of depth from each other, so middle ground, foreground, background, but you have foreground and then just background because of this little fucker right over here, this little this little root of water, which isn't that important because there's nothing going on over here. So what, 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 what is that for? Why does it need so much attention? Make it a little bit more crowded. Make it take up a little bit more room. I don't know what Ub was cooking, but he just nuked the house with garlic, man. What the fuck? Okay, so that means we're actually pushing this a little forward and getting rid of that canal and not to not be so close to the edge of the painting. We get it. There's a canal now. We get it. Trust me, our brains will finish the rest, but it did not need to be here. It was just so flattened. It looks so flat because of how much you force the separation between the foreground, which is actually flat. It's just a single value against the, um, uh, against the, oh shit, I lost it. Against the background, which is already flat. I don't know what I'm saying. 
<clears throat> Alright, so I got rid of that. Alright. Yeah, they did improve really fast. I totally agree. If you have any questions, you can ask at the end of class. Um, feel free to ask them. Okay, so I kind of did that, and that's kind of worked really, really quickly. I don't know why. I, okay, I need some answers. I, how do I get rid of no color, red, orange? I, how, how do I get rid of this crap? Because I want merge layers and flatten to be lower, just like we had it in CS5. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't need you. I don't need this. So how do I get rid of this crap? Can anyone help me later? Okay, uh, so next step would be to just kind of clean this up. I just don't want to let it kind of take over. Okay, all right. So now we have foreground against background. Everything is nice and distant. Now we have to make it more distant. So we are applying a color for the darkness, which is green, which is okay because we use that green to describe things that are dirty and ooh, gooey and gluey and sewagey. But we also have to remember that green is only the color assigned for the hard matter. It's not the stuff assigned for the light. So the light actually needs some yellow to it. It needs some natural color. You can't wash the whole environment in green. Um, and then just expect it to work. If these little glowy pieces are supposed to work, this whole area should actually be darker. So I'm going to defuse and darken. And then I'm going to give the color a little bit more coolness. Trust me, trust me, just calm down. It will, it will still be green. It'll still be a gooey green. But it's not going to be such an organic green that you had before. We're going to have more blue, which is more of a safe blue than... Um, than the green that you had before. It's still it's still a sewage color. It's still not sewage, sewer color. It still works. I'm gonna get color uh, layer, soft light. Abba, what'd you do? What is that smell? <laughs> What's going on? Did you nuke some garlic or something? <laughs> Ugh. All right, and then I'm going to. Just bring in that soft light right there. Instantly just creates this beautiful atmosphere. And then I'm going to delete. And then just try to create that path. Shrinking my brush as I delete at the, at the light ray. <clears throat> okay. Is it workspace? I don't know. I just really need to get rid of it like ASAP. <laughs> Sorry, I've been listening all day on purpose. It's really fun. Try it. Um, then I'm going to just see if I can darken a little bit more in the background to exaggerate those lights because the darker we go, ooh, mama, the, the nicer it is. And you really don't have a lot of detail going on in here. And you can argue and say, Isabak, what the heck is wrong with you? Of course I have detail. Look at what's going on. This is cluster. This is texture cluster. This is abstraction. This isn't detail. Detail is to have shingles. Detail is to have little wood planks. Everything seems to be representational and abstractly done. So lowering this a little bit isn't going to hurt you. I'm also going to blur the foreground. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And it really, it really needs to get touched up because that's in the immediate foreground. We're looking at a photograph. If we're blurring the foreground even like this, it's actually going to read really, really nicely. It's also, it would also be cool if you had different levels of foreground. So you had stuff that was most really, really immediate and stuff that was a further away. So the stuff that is closest, which would be this dude. So I'm going to crop it, cut, and just bring it closer. Shit, I need to set up paste in place. Um, and I'm going to blur this forward a little bit more, which is going to push it into the background. But this isn't a rule of depth. Things that are close to us are not blurry. It's just because we retained, I mean, we redirected uh, focus. Uh, things that are close to us um, are darker. Mm, they're blurry because of a camera. So remember, we're, sometimes we're seeing things because we see it through a camera, and that's why we're using them as a rule of depth, and sometimes it's the opposite. So because this was thrown off into the background, uh, what I'm going to do is add one little extra layer of light behind it in the atmospheric layer here, so this blue, and I'm going to just lighten that just a touch. Not too much, just a touch. 
<clears throat> and push that into darker layer towards the foreground. So now we have different levels, at least, you know, some level of depth applied. And you can give this mouse a little bit of, of detail. You don't have to jump crazy levels here to give the mouse some detail and some volume, but it's something to get us started. Okay, so now that we did that, we changed the color. I'm going to also paleify and I'm just going to desaturate that ray of light that we brought in. So I'll merge that down. So before, after, merge down, merge. All right, so I'm going to completely uh, just kind of get rid of that excessive yellow. And don't worry, I know you miss it, but I'm going to bring it back only on the rims. So saturate. It's just going to do a nice little effect because saturation kind of exists on mid-tones and paleness kind of exists opposite to that. I feel like I need a little bit more yellow, just a touch, just more pale. So my starting color is already pale. I'm just throwing that, oh shit, I'm throwing that in there ever so gently, just like that. Okay, so now that we took care of that, we have to take care of where the background is, the background background. Um, so you kind of have mixed some levels together over here. I'm just going to darken around the rim. Um, doot, doot. I wonder if Levi's bothering me somewhere. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Um, and then we have uh, the background value. So we're going to get normal 11%. So these houses are in front of this weird stuff attached to the wall. So what we want to do is just throw them into the distance some more. And we just do that by flattening them with a background value. And they'll read like they're in the distance farther than this little um, hilltop, I guess, of a value. So I'm going to get lighten. <laughs> Okay, and so, um, just doing that. Okay, and so what we're doing is just trying to create a difference. I don't know where this house goes, honestly. I really don't know. Um, I don't know if it's part of it or not. Let me just figure that out. Okay, so. Now that we've taken care of that, I feel like your crop is a little bad. Where is the classic crop? Where, how do I choose classic crop? Oy, Dios. Um, oy. Uh, uh. All right. Um, delete crop pixels. Content aware. Mm, mm, uh, use classic mode. Yeah, boy. Okay, so sometimes I feel like, you know, we overdo our framing and how much blackness is in the foreground sometimes all we really need is just a little bit of a kind of a hint of this foreground you, you don't need all that extra big chunk of black because it's taking up too much space on the canvas um, and it's not really working well the only problem with this is that now the mouse is in a different position which is an ideal so you want to move this fella over here somewhere so he's now in the, in the ideal position with the light. The composition gets messed up because I crop, but I just want to show you how much nicer it looks uh, when, we, when we don't do this big chunk of whatever in here. Because the light, the light here is really, really nice. I know you need to kind of hide the light a little bit. Um, so we're doing that. We're kind of throwing off things into the distance. I'm going to do the same thing under the light ray. I'm going to try to use a soft brush and go into lighten mode and um, just uh, throw things off into the distance by fogging them up, choosing that environment color and throwing them into the distance, leaving the darkest objects, the objects that are more forward. Now that I did that, the focus seems to be drawn back to this little place over here. You can exaggerate some of these little lights, these little houses. We did darken the scene up. Dodge tool and then um, 
I'm just going to raise these guys up a little bit. You might need a little bit more dodge. You might need a little bit more houses and lights kind of like up here somewhere. So I'm just going to just kind of just throw a couple in just to show you how much more clustered you can have it because it looks like a community um, you know that's been developed for a while it looks like it's been there for a while good or bad guys it doesn't matter it looks like it's been there oh my god I am gonna kill myself uh, I don't know why I even bother upgrading Right, so I'm just going to get rid of that. You need a couple more. Cluster them up as much as you can. And for the rat in the foreground, or the mouse or whatever, you, you can raise its value up to something, let's say, like, um, like this. Uh, so you can raise his values up just like that. You can give him some detail. He doesn't have to be completely blacked out. And after doing that, you can, you know, get the black that you need per the layer and then just try to apply some detail so that's his cape right there so he could have shadow right under his cape that's his distant leg um, that's his arm you can throw in some detail for the hair you don't have to actually throw him off completely into you can give him a core shadow if you want um, you don't have to completely toss him into the distance uh, with a black because he is still black compared to the background but we only raise the value so much you can even bring in color he doesn't have to be completely, um, you know, thrown off into a, a silhouette. You can even get some bounce light and throw it along his middle because he's still facing a light source. So we're looking at his cast shadow. So that means that he can, um, you know, get some light. So his belly is in, is in a bounce light where his legs are kind of, you know, not really exposed and we're seeing the cat shadow version of it so you can do that um i'm not sure how we're seeing this which ear is closest is he looking away behind him because this ear is farther so he looks like he's looking at us it doesn't look like he's looking at the destination if he is this ear should be the largest ear oh crap all right there we go and then uh, deselect, block. You can do a bit more detail here, just as long as you say generally dark for the area that he's from. And that means the foreground. The tail could have a little bit of subsurface on it, um, just around the rim. The further it gets, the ears can have a little bit of subsurface on them uh, because the light is behind them, so this actually would be an ideal uh, area to bring in some subsurface. Uh, just like that. Just as long as you remember to cast more shadow than light, you're safe. Okay, so you don't have to completely toss them off. Um, so I would edit this big old chunk of nothing. Uh, it's really not that important, so I would get rid of that and then re-blur the area up to match. Um, that's a tangent now, whoopsie. So you're still having a color problem here. Um, what I recommend is trying something a little bit more intense. You can stay safe just like this. Um, you can go for something a little bit more clear in the details that because it's now closer to the camera. You can go in for the full shingles and the tin roofs and the and the and the, and the wood paneling and whatever else. Some cracks in the wood. I mean, in the in the cement. Some people walking around. Maybe a sentry. Um, anything, anything really will help this painting along, uh, but you can't just leave it really under rendered like that. It's pretty under rendered considering it's smack dab in the middle of the drawing. It is the destination the viewer in the foreground is looking at and along with us and he's not the focal point at all. It's this whole little triangle here of houses. I did darken towards the top a little bit and, um, I'm just going to show you the before and after. I mean, I am tempted to throw this into blue completely, leaving the background in yellow, but you want it to be green. If you have to have green, go for the full effect. Um, this is see why it's not good to, because when we saturate, see how saturated the light is? This is why we don't saturate light. We always try to undersaturate it, because it's, it's going to 
kind of go crazy a little bit if we oversaturate. And then because it's a light source and it's daytime, I mean, if it was nighttime, we wouldn't see this. We just see a bunch of little twinkling yellow lights. So just, you know, take it easy with the fact that it might be the time of day that isn't intended. You got to take a photo in the right time of day sometimes. Um, so, so don't freak out too much if it's not exactly as you intended. So that should help the painting along. And that should help it along just like that. So what we're doing is we are giving him some extra little light to prove that he's there. All right, and then merge down. I'm sorry, flatten image. We're gonna select and move backwards. I, t I do wanna darken some more. I don't want it to be all that uh, screen work. Screen on dark, no. Um, I'm not sure what would help without me losing the lights, but it does need to be a little bit darker. Uh, so, and before, after. See that little canal? See what it did? It's just nothing. It's just a bunch of worthless water. It does nothing to the plot. <laughs> if this was empty, the story will go on. So I don't know why it's taking up a whole third, almost, no, a fourth of the lower half of the painting. You just get rid of it. We get it. It's there. Um, well, another cool thing you can do now that the water is there is uh, just take advantage of the fact that you can show off some uh, glimmer in the water. Um, so that'll be a little bit like, well, this water is, is fading wrong in the distance, but it'll be a little something like that. And then if there's water, you can throw the water up here and that can also throw off some glimmer backward. Okay. Um, another thing that you can add um, is blurring in the very far distance. So I'm going to blur objects in the very far distance. I'm just going to get the blur tool and straight up blur. Okay. So I'm just blurring stuff that isn't really that necessary and you can sharpen stuff that is necessary. Um, you probably need to show off some some of the uh, inhabitants of this town because it just looks like a, a trap. Okay, I'm going to borrow some of this light here. Cement is very reflective, so it might be reflecting uh, some of this spotlight very clearly. Uh, that's a very big geometric shape you have over here. The same thing over here. Um, just wherever the light, re I feel like the rim uh, finishes off before it gets there, but let me just sneak that in. <coughs> so there isn't really a moral to this to this critique, it's just work in layers, think about your, your the rules of depth, think about how much you really need. Do you really need to throw off a whole unit of the painting in complete black? It's not immediate foreground. It's not some sort of blur. It's not that necessary to throw it off. You can give him some intrigue. You can lighten him up quite a bit um, uh, for a while, and, and he'll still make a lot of sense um, to the to the to the rules of depth. Uh, this whole area here is not dark enough, so I just need to get his silhouette back, uh, just like that. I don't know what happened. Okay, um, so plan out your depth, okay? Plan out the units of your depth. Plan out the units of depth. Plan out your foreground, middle ground, background. Plan out your depth grounds. Write that back to me. Okay, um, so before, after. I, I, you know me, I love the blue. I would love to have some more blue, but um, merge visible. Let's move on to something else. <clears throat> For this piece, it's really complicated, only until you get rid of her. And then when you get rid of her, it makes a little bit more sense. Um, so if we get rid of her and lighten up the environment around her, 
she will now make sense because she didn't make sense before because she was like light and lighter than the environment the light is coming from above and it was just not making any sense um and when we get rid of her things will start to make sense because it will no longer be she has her own light environment because she is the main character no this whole room is a glow with with bioluminescence it's not about her it's about the room and that means that the room must be brightened to receive and then darken her accordingly it's a nighttime scene there's this big blanket of light coming from the top why are you lagging like what are you lagging like weren't you supposed to be some sort of super duper program why the hell are you lagging are you kidding me? I'm running a friggin' transformer of a computer. I am running a behemoth. And you're lagging? Are you freaking flinging, flogging, kidding me? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I'm casting this little spotlight and I'm selecting the inverse. I don't know what flinging, flogging means, okay? I've been saying it all day. And I'm darkening her completely. All right. Uh, she does get a little bit of uh, light to her, but only at the tops. And you've got outlines. Um, there are a little bit of, you know, outlines on the inside over here that we could really do without. <laughs> Plan out your depth, depth ground. Um, so we're going to get the light here and then just start, just start rendering, baby. All right, wherever the light is. Fucking <laughs> fucking kidding me. And we're just, we're just, you know, throwing some light over here. Try Clip Studio. <laughs> nah. Okay. So, it gets complicated only because of her. She has no drop shadow under her. The light is directly above. So when you start treating her as a subject, you will ignore your light source. You need to stop treating your your uh, your paintings as the as the single most reason why this painting is there. I know it is. I know she's the single most reason why the story is even framing her. But that's not how you paint. You don't paint for the object. You paint for the light. Write that back to me. You don't paint for the subject. Sorry. Sorry. Amendment. You don't pay for the subject. You paint for the light. Okay, and so you can, you know, dress up the lights however you want, whatever order you feel like it. You can dress up the, you know, you can go crazy, get get in some full-on, like, rim light going on on her face. You can throw, you know, really work on her, the shine in her hide. Okay, and you can correct this area as well, brighten it up as you need to. But she has to be secondary. She can't be the only object in here that, that that doesn't follow the light source everything else is pretty much intact everything else is following a light source so this is how you kind of maintain you know a good light environment a good illustration this is how you illustrate you think backwards when you illustrate you illustrate backwards you don't it's not all about the character anymore it's about the light that allowed them to be visible that's why they're in an illustration because an, a light allowed it all right, so you so you so you applied the light was you know it's upon application you got your application back it was approved saying yes you're allowed to do this illustration the light has been approved for you um, and you have the funding you needed to illustrate this painting and that was when you started painting okay this canvas is flipping flopping mess <laughs> so image image size I forgot it oh, holy crap Okay, so 2,500 should be good. All right. I don't know why you're working with such a massive canvas. You're going to kill your computer. I'm running a behemoth, and, uh, and and I'm having trouble. Okay, so a little bit of this little stem should be dark a little bit because it's not getting all the light um, just on some areas. Uh, the area behind can be dark or light. It really doesn't matter. You're, you're not having real fixed separations between each unit. No unit has its own value, its own position. The area behind over here 
could be a little bit more light to give the thing a little bit more of a silhouette. Shouldn't be as bright as the light source. Should be less bright. Just like so. Should have its own light source somewhere above it um, to kind of reveal. So when we have an illustration like this, you draw object first and then you consider everything else around it and try to shade until something looks half right. That's not how it works. What we do is we uh, think about the light source that allowed this object to exist, that allowed this object to be visible. And then once we have that done, we kind of have a more of a, a, a kind of a, you know, a real environment, a real illustration. If you illustrate in the opposite way, you're no, you're no longer illustrating. You're just coloring in a coloring book. All right. Does that sound harsh? Good. Does that hurt to hear? Good. I hope it hurts to hear because if you don't get, get you know, create, make your peace with this, you'll never get into getting all the mileage down. You'll never get into actually getting all the hours into your form studies and learning how to shade a cube in floating space and not see it as a subject but as an object so that you can, without any pre-existing bias or predisposition or crutch, go in there and render any damn thing the world throws at you. But you're not going to do that if you continue painting and illustrating like you're coloring a coloring book. All right? Are you are you in kindergarten? Are you? No? Okay, then stop coloring with a coloring book. All right? And so uh, what I would need to do here is just figure out how bright this really is. What's the secondary light source? Is there another, is there a time of day that she is? If it was time of day, we wouldn't be able to tell that this is glowing. Have you ever tried opening, turning on a flashlight in your phone outside? I'm sure all of you have done that. You've turned on the flashlight while you're outside in a sunny day on a pier or something. You can't, you can't even tell your flashlight is on. It has to be dark first, and when it's dark, then that thing is blinding. Um, so it has to be dark enough for us to see this, for this little thingy mushroom to grow, I mean to glow, and um, that's the only way it would work. Okay, so you've got like crazy detail in here. You've got little speckles. Those are so, so cheesy. You don't need those. They don't make the painting look better. I, you can't say, oh, I wasn't finished, this wasn't finished. Well, you threw in little speckles. Those are last minute little fi final little things. When you've, when you've exhausted all other avenues, the artist does one thing. They start to, they start to stipple with a crazy look in their eyes. <laughs> it's just stippling and all you hear is this. You can hear the panic in the stipple because they know they, they you know they run out of they run out of ideas they have no other way to to defibrillate the painting and so they end up just just stippling away trying to save what what they can and um, you know if you want to render this if you want it to look better show me the difference between this mushroom and whatever the hell is happening around it what is going on around this mushroom why is this mushroom growing some sort of fog out of it? So get that out of there. Show me the difference between this mushroom, the mushroom above it, the mushroom on the side, and the texture of the background. Is it some sort of forest scene? Is there some sort of foliage behind? Show us some, some texture over here. All right, show us some difference. I don't understand what's happening. And it looks finished, but when we really scrutinize and go in and ask the question, what the fuck is this guy? Then we can, you know, really realize you never had anything going on. You never really, you know, explored any real differences between middle ground, foreground, and background. Even if this is early in the stage, you're already at the point where you're painting her face details, you're painting her little nipples, and you didn't even think about, you know, larger objects, which you sure as hell included the nipples. Don't forget the nipples. Okay, so this is a good start. It's going in the right direction. The ball is rolling in the right direction. <clears throat> We've considered the object as part of a light environment. Now we have to just bounce the values and make sure that she doesn't read as complete nighttime. Um, so lighten. I'll just bounce all this light back up. It's bouncing a lot of light upward. Crayon lives matter. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's not mushroom for texture here. <laughs> no, don't leave Hamish. Um, all right, so please remember, stippling isn't going to make the painting amazing. The light will. You ask the light, hello, light. I'm interested in doing a painting to, next week. Uh, it's going to be a really interesting painting. i got a mushroom. It's glowing. It's a girl. She's got nipples. 
<laughs> everything is perfect and in place. Do you allow me to draw? And the light will say yes, and it will be good. And you will have a painting that is actually an illustration. If you don't apply to the light, you don't look up references, you don't map out what your room is going to be, you don't do a form study that will prepare you for this kind of, um, you know, what's expected of you for this kind of illustration, you will be coloring in a coloring book. You will have lines, you will have crayons, and you will be coloring in a coloring book. If that pacifies you, if you feel good doing that for the rest of your life, if 30 years down the line you're really, really happy with your coloring skills, Skills, then you know that's for you but if you want to render if you want to create if you want to build worlds you have to start with the time of day you have to start with the light environment you have to start with the major forms you have to block in the, 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 the atmosphere create rules of depth separate middle ground from foreground it's really simple I know it doesn't feel like a lot that I list it but once you actually combine all those together you have a world you have a you have a room you have an you know a, a painting something's going on um, yes <laughs> Uh, sniffles, sniffles. Um, okay, so I'm so sorry, mods. I said the word nipple and all hell broke loose. Okay, um, so the problem with this painting is <laughs> guess what? It's always the lighting. Um, so, what you did here is you have a silhouette, there's magic happening behind him or around him. I can't really tell if he's doing his, his swirly swirl attack. But for the sake of the painting, right now where you put the swirl, the agent of swirl is actually behind him. Um, I can't even tell if it is behind him. If you put it under him, you, you never want to make the primary under the face. Um, it's a big mistake. Uh, the reason why this is problematic is because you're distorting the face. So if you are going for an angelic uh, messiah type hero like Link, you don't want to do that because you're demonizing him you're making him look more like an antagonist light that distorts the face is light that comes in from the bottom up and that means that he will have long shadow like kind of like a camp light fire um light source campfire light source uh, and that means he's gonna have all these distortions long shadows that are creepy the kind of shadows would give like a character like scar from the lion king or another evil character planning world domination or some sort of saddam like character <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is just throw him into a straight silhouette that should kind of clean up the environment, either lighten the environment or darken him. Oh, what am I doing over here? I'm not doing the lasso. <clears throat> Bear with me. I know, man, my lasso skills are just top notch. Un un unrivaled heavyweight champion lasso. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> I can't fucking do this anymore. I can't deal with you, lasso. I can't flip and deal with you anymore, you flip and flop and mother. I swore I wouldn't swear again, so. Sorry if I have. Oh my God in heaven. Oh, okay. Well, I don't want to lose this, so I'm just going to, you know, put it where it belongs. Select inverse. And I'm going to choose a value that is for the dark. So I'm going to borrow from this blue. Throw that over. Get into our darken. And just darken a little bit on him. And I'm going to select inverse. And then just <laughs> uh, lighten. Oops. <clears throat> oh, I have? <laughs> I have sworn? Oh, no. <laughs> really? Um, so I'm going to put it on soft light, and I'm going to desaturate so that the environment glows a little bit more. Is everybody lagging? Flipping mother flopping less. <laughs> um, so where is duplicate layer? Oh, my Lord. So they, so they update Photoshop, but they still put the duplicate layer beside delete layer. One of them, you don't want the layer, and one of them, you want more of the layer, but put them beside each other in case someone presses the wrong one. Stupid. And then give us all these dumbass little, 
little whatever they are, and then they're just confusing everything. Whatever, Photoshop, Adobe. Okay, so we darken the object over here. If there is a light coming in from the side, now we can add it in. It'll actually make sense. So before, if the side of the shield wasn't light enough, um, uh, now you have it light enough because it's it's darkened. So if you ever if you've ever sat bes stood beside a light that's super bright, just the person's weakness and then and their inability to process your detail on the light behind you, you actually look like a silhouette in that moment. And then now that we have a nice distinction over here, we can we don't really have a light environment from a universal. The universal is here. It's down here. So I. Recommend you rethink that, but I'm just going to keep working with what I have. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to try to find everywhere where that rim light has access to Link. Oh, his whole sword isn't a silhouette, so his whole sword should be dark. But where you had him before was just, it just didn't, didn't work. And um, I kind of like where it is now. I'm going to shift the colors over to something a little bit more friendly. The reason why I'm doing this is because we're talking about shadows now. But, get this, I'm moving back before I messed with the color. And I'm getting that green at the center of the fire. So that means that we'll still have that environment color, you know, that starter for the environment. It'll explain why we have all this green in the area, but it'll it'll be a blue scene with green moments instead of just green wash. That green uh, does gooey things. It's like the Scooby Doo monster green, the ghost green. It's the it's the creepy uh, weird zombie monsters when you get the sun song for the first time kind of green. It's 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 a witch green. It's an evil wizard green. It's Nosferatu green. It is ghoul green. I call it ghoul green and you, there's no other role for a green like this. It's not angelic. It's not mystical. It's it's evil sciency alchemist type green. Alchemist is more blue and purple. Uh, this kind of green is specific for that role. Okay. Um, so this is a silhouette now. The light is behind. The sword will not have a sheen on it. It may have some glow on it from behind, but this is how you set your scene up. Uh, if there is any kind of light in the foreground, so if the fire does swerve around him and circle around him, this is about as much as you're allowed to do with it. Bloop. Just like that. And then you can get whatever you need on the rim light all around him. Okay, so what you did before was you, you really set a, you set yourself up for a, an environment that was a silhouette, you chose too much saturation, you chose the wrong color, and you were setting yourself up for contrast dependency because it wasn't reading, and somewhere down the line you would have revisited this and done too much. So I'm just going to get Dodge Tool. All right. Oh yeah, the hair, definitely the hair. Oh, God, I forget about that. Hair gets a lot of sheen on it. The top part of this, um, but that'd be really cool to uh, to lecture one day. Nope, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's this. This is all wrong. This is all silhouette. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, this was a this was a problem. That's what kind of stopped the uh, silhouette from finishing this little sleeve. <clears throat> They'll feel the passion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See so that edge? That's such a nice sharp edge. Such a beautiful edge. I would do the same thing for the hair, just so that the hair doesn't uh, do anything funny. Are you marinating garlic and garlic? Huh? We're gonna fry some garlic and some garlic sauce. Nuke just went off in my house. I like garlic as much as the next person, but when it's when it's just straight up, you know, evil potion, at that point it's just it's not even all about the garlic, you know? 
So I'm just highlighting the hair a little bit. <laughs> that was giving me that fuck you look. Okay, so merge down. Let's take a look at the before and after. I feel like some more glow is required behind him. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do it since I still have the lasso. Um, before, after. Uh, so, what am I going to do? Alright, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. Nice. Ooh. And then I'm going to push it over into the blue. Oh, mama. That's what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to get some of that green back. Oh man, this is going to look good. And I'm just going to get that green and just go mad. I'm just going to go crazy <clears throat> with Dodge Tool. Because this is the flame, it's a fire. It's part of the, the little area over here. And that's kind of the source of the power. I added a bloom. And that's good. That's the rank as a vampire. <laughs> Okay, so before, after, before, and it may be that, oh my god, Link, our diva, our beautiful goddess, Link, is now in a, in a silhouette. We've lost all the detail. You haven't. In fact, it looks even more magical. It looks even more interactive. Um, this is more, uh, you know, this appeals to me more than, you know, what you had going on before with that green. Um, if it was absolutely necessary, he's killing some trees. When you have a blue flashlight, it turns everything around it blue. Have you ever looked at a plant lamp? It's purple. Um, with all the UV stuff in it. And it literally turns my basil plant into brown. All the green looks brown because of the blue-purple filter. Um, this is what happens. Even if there are trees behind him, they are going to look blue because the, the spell is blue. Therefore, the main light source momentarily is blue. <laughs> um, the environment seems a bit too bright. Would still work if everything was darker. Would you be able to show the, the glow more? Um, well, the one way to check that is levels. So just, just, oops, everything's still deselected, I think. Is it? I don't know. Oh, okay, it's not deselected. So I started off with him, so I'll do it like this. Um, this is actually more accurate. <laughs> this is more accurate to what's actually happening. So it would be really cool if you set it up there, but it doesn't even have to be there. Let me raise this. If, if you raise it all the way over here, it still looks okay because he's still moved in ratio to how dark he is. You can raise it up here. You can de decrease saturation. It's really your choice. But honestly, I believe that uh, where it is right now, apart from the weird framing and the excessively horizontal canvas, which is a whole other day, I feel like it's a lot more, it's got a lot more motion, a lot more beauty to it. And we talked a lot about how dimming the object makes the light source more appealing because we've given light source weakness. Um, and we actually captured the light source in its main um, habitat, I guess. That's the main point of a silhouette is that everything around it is darker. Uh, everything around it is lighter and it's the silhouette. Um, so if you don't like this, this is how this is supposed to be. If you don't like it, if you want the light to be from the side and the top, if you want something a little bit more crazy, if you want more detail on the face, you might want to cheat a little bit. You can like do something like this. So, where you have a cast shadow coming off the nose, oopsie, you know, you can try to go a little bit more crazy with what's happening on the face. You can be a little bit more daring with the rim light on the hair. Um, you, can, you can try to force the visibility of the object a little bit more, um, and that might help you kind of salvage what you think is a requirement for detail, but I don't think it's needed. But if you had to have it, you can. You can throw a cast shadow of the entire arm on the, uh, the link. <laughs> so, soft light. So the, oh god, oh jeez. Duplicate, oh my god, where are you? Duplicate layer. That's not going to work. Let's go into lighten. 
we can throw his cast shadow on top just like that and that might be enough cast it on that cast it on that it gets fuzzier the further it gets um and that would be the cast shadow over here too um so darken just like that 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 cast shadow is also the arm just this way um you can throw the shadow of the little satchel um this little area here wouldn't actually get some thing would be a little darker okay so you can try all kinds of ways to to bring the painting back this actually might travel all the way up just like that the shadow of the arm all the way up just like that casting the shadow on the face just like this so there's a lot of ways for you to bring back intrigue because we darkened link there's a lot of ways to bring that back um, if you feel like this isn't for you you don't like it so that's one way that you can um, bring it back but I recommend this kind of lighting because before it was flat 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 and now it has he has a space behind him that is being occupied by the light you want to bring things back to green feel free do what you want to do it's still it's just a color change um, but it's still technically the same but because I like blue so much and blue is so magical and blue is used for like good magic or friendly magic or nice magic blue is usually the color they choose um, just think about the Patronus charm in Harry Potter that was blue right yeah it is what do I say? <clears throat> So, any questions? Isn't the composition him composition making him oppressed? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Every time she does this before and after, I am so afraid she must click and all is gone. You can use this camera icon and layer menu to provide to avoid that. By the way, um, camera icon. <laughs> Who did this beautiful human light environment aside? Um, yeah, totally. It looks like the whole room is illuminated. There would be bounce backlight from the surrounding lit up walls. Um, that's already been considered in Link's visibility. The fact that Link is visible is because it's already been considered. Okay? So this, this, and this all have one common thread. Please ask the question, where is my main light source? Where is my primary? And then ask the question about the rules of depth. Uh, what is behind? What is in front? Very, very easy, straight up questions. Nothing is too, it's not some sort of crazy calculus. You don't have to calculate a parabola with a, I don't know, God, interjection line of 0.75. I don't know, God, I don't even know math. Like, I don't even know fantasy math. <laughs> um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I hope this has been a helpful class for you guys. So, any questions, feel free to ask me, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about the contest. Um, so isabrak.com. So join. Uh, go to isabrak.com. Click on the little Google Plus icon to join. And as for the contest, please read through it. It is a boss fight. It is an evil monster, insect, dragon, and it is in the middle of a high cliff mountain range. And and our little our little dude, our little hero, has sick and fucking tired sick and flip and flop and tired of, of this monster um, harassing the land and eating all of the good force of nature. I don't know. And uh, he will smite him with his sword. So get in there and show off that energy. Use some good um, referencing for cinematic framing. Use some good referencing for attack gestures. Uh, build your references. I will not be providing a resource pack because I want you guys to research and make sure that you have all of your info when you're posting, you have all of your thumbnails, you have all of your practice. I want to see lots of practice. I am going on vacation between 23rd and 27th, possibly 23rd and the 4th. That means that 24, 26, 1, and 3 of, eight of May, I am not there. Um, so I really need this vacation, you guys. <laughs> kind of go crazy over here. Um, and was there another announcement? Uh, I think that's it. For, let me look at some questions. Um... I mean, like, he's not in control, not much headspace. I didn't feel like he didn't have much headspace. I feel like he he's okay. Yeah, I mean, the least interesting part of his hat isn't visible, so his little, his little sleeping cap. 
is it alright to do the 14 day challenge traditionally? No, because you're going to be sketching and that's still going to be a line dependent way of sketching. Sketching is just line dependent, period. If you can find a way to render and darken the object and have a mid-tone and, and have all of that, then feel free to do it. But honestly, the 14 day challenge is such, such a safe, closed off learning lab environment challenge. It's good a way. It's a good way to to, to kind of lean your way into um, digital and learning how to paint digitally. And uh, it's a safe place to make mistakes, and you might as well just learn how to paint digitally. So I don't recommend traditional. I never have. But you can do it. I mean, no one's stopping. You can learn how to draw a face well with with sketching. You can. You're still going to improve. That's the nature of the challenge to come back and repeat the same face over and over and over again in the same amount of time it takes to create a good habit, which is two weeks to 27 days, I think. Um, that's that's the main point of the challenge, it teaches you better workflow, work faster, work ethic. It's, it's just a wonderful challenge for all that, but um, uh, I, I recommend you learn how to paint. Sketching is sketching while painting is painting, and I don't know if you want to try it with <laughs> acrylic and oils, you can try. Um, but I recommend a, a tablet. You know, you know how much a tablet is nowadays. A really good tablet can be the price of your phone. I know you have a phone. I know your, you know your parents bought you a phone, and you probably have a really nice, I don't know, like iPhone or something. Um, so uh, you can use that towards a nice seventy dollar Huion H610 Pro that I own, and it's a seventy dollar Huion, and I've, I've, I abuse this thing, and it is still keeping it together. And I have zero driver issues, so I don't know. It's your call. Have you learned Photoshop shortcut? Not all, but to make your work easier. Um, do you have to learn? No, you don't have to. Oh wait, me? I have to. Are you asking me? Should I have to? <clears throat> no resource pack. No. Also, I missed this, but I can participate with traditional tools. I don't have a drawing tablet. Same answer to you, uh, Diego Fernando Salazar. How can I control the proportions? Uh, flip your canvas, measure your reference. In the first painting, you said to plan out units of depth. How would I plan out depth? Choose your lightest value for your furthest object and your darkest value for your closest object, depending on the time of day, and that means your middle object is something in between those two extremes. Um, that's it for today. Thank you everyone for joining. I will see you guys in my Tuesday class next. So if you're interested in supporting, Patreon is always an option. If you join as an apprentice, it's a nice equivalent of, of uh, what we do in uh, private tutoring, but it's a little bit more uh, free reign. You do get assignments. The assignments for this month have already been handed out. I'll upload a showcase soon on Facebook of all the homework from the past three months. On, on, on our Discord, on Patreon. You join the Discord, you're part of a kind of a daily interactive um, learning experience. Um, we do have fun. We like to have fun here. Um, but you, there's always a watcher if you just want to support. I am aiming for a thousand patrons. Um, hopefully that will happen while I'm still alive. Um, so thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you guys on Tuesday the 10th. Bye-bye. Uh,